Hi everybody, it's Cindy the Scrapologist. Thanks for coming back to my channel and watching. I have two more this and that journal kits that I'm going to be putting in my shop today. Give me about an hour to get those in. The other one sold within a day. So um, again, I just have the best customers and I'm trying to keep up with you. So I did have time. We're having a blizzard today. Well, not actually a blizzard, but a pretty bad snowstorm. And so it's a great day to be in my studio and just focusing on my shop. So I was able to put these together um, today. I already had the covers made. I'm never going to get to all of the covers that I have and all of the vintage books that I have. So um, yeah, so it's a good um, way for me to still um, share them and not have them go to waste and just sit on my shelf. So this is the first one. It is a blue patterned, kind of like a canvas sort of material that's adhered with heat and bond. So it's um, completely durable and is not going anywhere. And the kit is just about everything you need to make an entire junk journal, but you put it together yourself. And this, um, I gave you enough paper to make about two signatures, but this spine is one and three quarters of an inch, so you could actually fit three signatures in here. You could add more scrapbook paper, or you could just leave it like this and have room to stuff more things in. So let me just pull out this paper first and show you it. This one is made out of chipboard, not a vintage book. I made this one myself and I included a piece of ribbon that uh, I'm going to show you what I would do if I were going to make this into a journal. I, I would put the, I, I just like this technique of putting the ribbon down first before you put your end pages on because it just gives a nice a nice look and then you can just tie it and there's your journal but you can also you can do a bunch of other things with it if you if you prefer you can just tie it around like this too but I've included that for you and then I included some really beautiful scrapbook paper that I would use if it were me on the front and back cover. So look at how gorgeous this, oops, that's upside down, has to go like this. Look at how gorgeous this is with that glittery, that those glittery flourishes. I think that's, that's just beautiful. And so I cut them down to size. There is an extra piece here in case you want to cover the spine with it. But um, usually what I do is I put cheesecloth on here. And the chipboard, you can sew your signatures through. Um, looking to see if I have an example, but I don't have one handy. But you can sew your signatures through the chipboard, or you can sew your signatures onto a piece of heavy, heavy cardstock, and then glue glue your signatures onto the spine here and then this would go on top. That's just one idea for you. There are plenty of videos out there that show you how to do that, including some of my tutorials that I've got. Um, oh, on for the cover, uh, the corners didn't come out perfect, and I'm kind of funny about that. So I did provide you with some little brass colored corners that you can put you put them on and then you just kind of squeeze them shut you can put a little dab of glue in there if you wish and I also included two vintage buttons now if you watch me you know how hard it is for me to give up my buttons I love my vintage button collection <laughs> So you're getting two, and I love both of them. But I thought, in case you wanted to take, I li really like, well, I like both of them. This one probably needs to be cleaned a little bit. No, I guess it's just aged. But um, th either one of these would look pretty as um, on the cover, too, as a little closure. 
if you wanted to do that. So you're going to get those buttons. And I also included just a little um, cardstock frame that you can put brads in, you can stain it or paint it, and put that on the cover too if you wanted to. So this will make just a really beautiful journal. Okay, so, and then this was, is what the inside would look like before you get your signatures in. And then in your signatures, again, there's enough room for you to add to it, but I included some scrap paper. Let me just do a qu quick flip through. Most of the scrap paper is white on the back side so that you have a nice blank canvas for artwork if you wish. I included some coffee or tea stained paper. Can't remember which this is. This is a vintage um, ledger paper, scrapbook paper. And I included some undercut pages, and I'll show you why a little later. Vintage comic book. And as I've said over and over and over, I shop estate sales, and so all of the items that I provide, with the exception of scrapbook paper and things like that, are vintage, true vintage. This is a vintage page from a, um, a 1920s National Geographic that has some cool ads on it. Scrapbook paper, coffee paper, undercut, coffee paper. Look at how this one came out. You have to go over and check out my video as to how I how I coffee stain my paper because I like the way it turns out. Here's an oversized flash card that I folded in half and used as part of the signature. Okay, and the reason why I gave you the undercut pages is because you might want to sew. I gave you one example. You might want to sew a pocket so you fold it over and then you just sew it down the sides and then you have a nice little tuck spot. So you, if in case you want to sew on those other pages. And then this is, a lot of these items are in the this and that kit that sold yesterday. Um, and this is one of my favorites. This is a vintage teacher's grade book from the 1940s. And that's in there. More scrapbook paper, National Geographic, undercut page that you can sew if you want. Ch vintage children's book page. This is Rupert. Scrapbook paper. This is um, from a stamp catalog. More of my tea stained paper, scrapbook paper. And a little Shakespearean sonnet page. That's a, from a vintage book. So there are your pages. Additionally, you will get some of this vintage fabric, lace, that I've talked about before that I found. And I've washed it and cared for it, and I'm sharing it with you all now. So you can have that. And then in this little packet, well, let me go through this stuff that didn't fit in first. This is a vintage book page that I stamped some winter trees onto. Get a doily. You get a vintage ad. This one's kind of cool. Big Ben. This is from the early, this is from early 1800s. This is a just a, this is not vintage. It's retro. It's from the like the seven, 1970s, I think. It, it's from a book of impressionist paintings and it's a it's a postcard. This this one is a Van Gogh. But the painting was done in the 1800s, so kind of counts as the vintage theme. A napkin and two vintage stickers. These are circular and they peel off. And then in this little packet, oh, and a vintage 
postcard from the 1920s and it has the stamp and the person's writing on the back. Very fun. And then a li another little packet of goodies that so that you can decorate your pages, especially those white ones and the tea stained ones. Here we have a plastic Rolodex. And what I like to do is put this on the page, just tape the bottom, and then you can slip things inside, something that's really pretty that you might want to see. You would, you would slip it in. And it's kind of a cool tuck spot. These are, now I can't pick them up, they're stuck. Here we go. These are little butterflies that I cut out of book pages, vintage book pages from the 1800s. Two really pretty vintage playing cards. I think the image on there is really beautiful and they're edged in gold. I don't know if that's quite coming through. There you go. Two little lined note cards that have been tea stained. Here's a vintage page from a thesaurus and a vintage sheet of um, graph, uh, graph paper. Couldn't remember the name of it. Graph paper. Here's just a pretty little image from scrapbook paper. Here are two vintage um, playing card, not playing cards, uh, game game cards, play money, and I think that this came from a this came from an antique Monopoly game. Not sure. This is something, uh, a, just a card that I stamped in white ink, and you can you can um, put glue on or tape on the back and put this onto a page and then decorate the inside. That's always fun. A little Tim Holtz image. This is fun. I found a tablet of old filling station receipts. This is a Texaco receipt. It has this and then the, the there's supposed to be a piece of carbon in between these. but. That's really fun. I think these are from like the 1940s, maybe. And a little undercut book page that has a cedar tree on it and a cypress and a nice little torn edge here so you can ink it up and make it look really vintage. And then this is just a scrap of what I gave you for the front and back cover. I thought you might really want to use that pretty pretty image. So that is book one. Oh, the book by the way is five and a half by eight and a half. Really nice size to fit in your hand. The other book, the other kit I should say that I have took the cover took a lot longer to make. So this one's going to be a little more of a cost than the other one, but not a lot. But this is covered in a canvas, and it is Im it has images under the canvas. Two flourishes, and then I did do the raised edges on the spine, nothing on the back. But this is all ready for you to paint or decorate, or you can leave it like it is. But it would be really fun to sort of use some acrylic paint or some something and at least go over these flourishes that that would be fun but you can paint the whole thing and the button you get with this is you're going to get two buttons two vintage buttons but this would look really cool on the cover too if you wanted and I'm also providing one of the little frames and you are getting corner edges and they're the um, I'm pretty sure these are Tim Holtz maybe not I don't know but these are a little more decorative and you will get four of these for your corners and that it just really dresses up the journal especially if you're giving it as a gift and then this piece of it's sort of like a brown burlap 
I wanted to sort of stick with the theme of the texture of this and it needs to be ironed but um, you could wrap it around or you could do as I've shown you in the previous one you could put it here and and have it be your your closure on the inside of this one I did put cheesecloth because I like the way it looks when it's sticking out and I would totally stain this with my Tim Holtz vintage photo or whatever color you like you know this could actually go here too that would look really nice and when I provided you for the front and back covers I'm in love with this this is totally what I would do look at how gorgeous and classy this looks I love that. I think that that would look just gorgeous. And you put your pages in and they're really pretty. So I cut these the right size for you. I also did provide an extra piece in case you want to cover your spine. Okay. And that's what the inside would look like. And then, oh, and the measurements of this one are five and three quarters by eight and a half. This one is made out of chipboard. I made this myself. This is not a vintage book. The spine is two inches, so you could easily fit three signatures in here. I gave you two. Okay, but they're all moshed into one right now, but there are there are enough for two signatures here so here's your scrapbook paper coffee stained paper pretty much the same exact as what was in the other one but uh, different different colors undercut comic book stamps coffee stained just want to flip through so you can see what you're getting for the scrapbook paper National Geographic, undercut page, scrapbook paper, National Geographic, really cool textured coffee paper, Rupert children's book page. I did sew a pocket for you in this one. Shakespearean sonnet, flashcard, Teacher's grade page. Ledger paper. And scrapbook paper. And everything that you get in the pack in the other kit, you get in this one. Same exact stuff, except you get a little scrap of this if, if you want to use it. So, here they are. They're going to be in my shop in about an hour. It's November 16th at 1. Hopefully by 2, these will all be photographed and in my shop. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy these. Bye.